Hello, my name is Exibu, and this is Unity of Command to Edelweiss mission on hard. Three, two, one. So, here it starts, the most difficult mission of the thir first three conferences of the Stalingrad DLC. Maybe it's the most difficult mission of the entire DLC. I kind of suspect that it's not, but we'll see how it goes so far. Actually, it almost broke me, to be honest, uh, because of the... Um, uh, because the original build of this game, original pre-release build that I got my hands on like a week before release, actually uh, had a more difficult version of this uh, camp uh, of this mission. Virtually impossible to fully finish a uh, version of this mission, um, and uh, on, at least on hard. Uh, and I, I had to replay the entire campaign for the historic branch. So, well, yeah, here, here we are. So what do we do here in general? Uh, this mission is a big mess. Uh, obviously, if you explore what uh, HQs uh, the units belong to, you realize that it's it's a mess. It's just a mess. I say mess a bunch of times in the the cracking video, and it, like I'm gonna say it like again. So it's it's a big mix, mix around uh, Semikarakorsk, right? So, but it's also a suggestion what you should do here. So it means that the first army, because you've got like a first tank army, you've got a bunch of uh, troops like uh, around Semikarakorsk. It's a good idea to maybe not split them trying to go like the obvious thing is to go from Rostov to, like southwards directly southwards like like destroy all these all that infantry rear guards infantry It's very it's actually very satisfying to be honest, but like it's not a good idea Because you will split your troops so some of your troops will remain at Semikarakorsk because it's a generally a good idea and some of them will go directly towards Krasnodar and everything. Yes, it's an option, but I found that it's not an efficient one. One, A, as I said, it splits your troops, uh, meaning that some of your troops will not get the support of the HQ. Uh, and at least at this point in the mission, it's not the best of ideas. Uh, at some point you will do it, but not now, because you have this very important task of providing the 4th army, which is going like it's like is 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 in extreme north, right? So those guys are equipped with, with Romanian divisions and everything, so they actually are pretty critical and they uh, have a task that is very much a mission, en a mission ending if you fail it, so, or not very good at performing that task so yeah ye and these guys don't get a decent source of supply so it's just a truck uh, at the edge of the map so near to Tinskare and so you really need to clear the railway line between Rostov and uh, well the fourth uh, the fourth army right so and this is going to be the main task the principal task of the first army HQ they have still even though you will push kind of in a direction slightly opposite of Krasnodar and my cop and everything if you push towards Salsk, you will still have plenty of time to reach all of those southern objectives and all of the rest objects along all of those southeastern objectives as well so it's it's very much possible obviously i'm making this video so i completed this mission and it really works so uh in the zimovniki area try to push as hard as you can uh be, be a cheat about this quote-unquote, uh, get good weather around Zimovniki. So sometimes I had playthroughs or attempt playthroughs uh, where the weather on the first turn was very bad. I couldn't uh, push through that cavalry division that guards it uh, without any losses. And re like re really, like mot that motorized division is critical. Don't lose too much of it uh, too quickly, so you will need it later. But... Uh, pushing through as quickly as possible is also important. For the railway line around uh, Rostov, Salsk, uh, a good rule of thumb is if by the end of the t uh, third turn the fourth army already has uh, a railway connection, a secure railway connection, you're done your job right. So by the time, like, 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 essentially, like the rule of thumb is coming from the fact that. Uh, by the end of turn three, uh, things are like become very dire for 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 the fourth army. So it's becoming very difficult. It's like pretty much impossible to maintain their supply with emergency supply, like the the ability, the HQ ability. And so it's just everyone just starts running out, and you really need that a railway line. So at the beginning of turn four, so by the end of turn three, if that railway line, line is clear and secure you will uh, succeed at least in this initial stage of the mission. 
And so, uh, for now, it's going pretty well. And this is actually the reason why you, s you, really, you really need to focus your first army on clearing all of these troops. And the 17th army will kind of be supporting. So, on the one hand, you can uh, push forward towards Krasnodar and maybe deal some damage to the Soviet infantry. Because, for the most part, in this mission, like, not somewhat unusually for this DLC, actually, because the Soviets love counter-attacking, they've, um, they've tweaked the AI and it's much more aggressive now and can, can be really nasty, as you will see very soon. Uh, and, but for the most part, in most of the map, they are not very counter attacky if you wish. So they will, uh, most of that infantry will try to function as a buffer, so I'm guessing they, uh, they set the AI of these divisions to function like that, to be very defensive. And to, to effectively work like a barrier. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so, but the main, once again, the main uh, task of the 17th Army will be to actually secure that railway. So the first uh, first army pushes through, blows, blows that hole, and uh, the breaches that hole, and so the 17th follows Kind of appropriately, it's an infantry, like, more standard, less, uh, less combined arms uh, army, so it's very appropriate that it would kind of um, develop the breakthrough of the tax, right? So I'm really playing it very, very kind of Bewegungskriegy, uh, uh, and so, uh, and... So as you can see, I'm clearing the railways, the, the third turn, so I really need to do it, but as you can see, there's just one guy sitting. Uh, one guy sitting in the um, in the railway. I'll kill him, and then I'll send all the infantry to just cover the railway. By the way, that tank division that went through Politarsk, like just rushed through Politarsk, it's uh, a division. Uh, I think it's the only division of the Fourth Army, it's the only tank division of the Fourth Army. You may send it to the top Gnerevo, to the distant objective. That is the most, the biggest pain in the butt in this mission. But I usually, I prefer to use it to take a lista. Oh, uh, and, uh, yeah, so, but it's not so difficult, and that tank might actually help in some of the other eastern objectives, as we will also see. So, you already see that Abganero, I've already approached Abganero on turn three. Actually, if you get lucky with air support attacks, you can actually, as you can see, take Abgen Abgenerovo on turn three or four, so it's... I don't remember actually when exactly I took up Ganero for the first time. I think I got kicked out. So I actually took it twice by its deadline, but you can reach it very early. And so at this point, as you can see, I'm being very aggressive with the first army. So I've done the initial breakthrough, the railway is clear, it's secure, it's fine. So at this point, you kind of need to separate. The, now you have to split the first army, but the advantage here is that you really don't need to do lots of kind of breaking through work. Let's put it this way, right? So you don't need uh, the entirety of the first army uh, uh, to, to kind of focus on, uh, on a particular task, right? So at this point, and let's look what the Soviets do. Yes, yes. This time I actually remembered to switch uh, the uh, the uh, um, uh, the the units in in fog of war on, so we actually see what the Soviets are doing. So and hence the video is a bit longer, but anyway, it's also nice to uh, take a peek into the uh, into the psyche, into the mentality of the AI, which is quite admirable, pretty strong, and really annoying in this game. And so uh, the points of uh, like what I'm doing in in with the um, with the first army, with the first Panzer army. So, I'm, as you know, you probably have seen the the mission. There are a bunch of eastern objectives, right? So there are two. The um, I forget the names. So there are two, uh, the two eastern objectives, which are very difficult to get, and you need to rush to them. You, there's just no way you can do like this very like conventional push. Right, so but you just just need to rush them. Uh, they're not very well defended, but they're somewhat defended, but not very well. And the only problem with all rushes usually is the supply. So you have to do like a supply thing. And so, uh, what the first army, the primary primary task for the first army will be to help with Krasnodar and my cop. But you don't need to send all of it. Pretty much, you only need to send. Uh, and by the way. 
Like, so I, here I'm actually not taking up Ganervo, so I'm I'm just clearing the railway so that I can set up a, a very, very close supply hubs, uh, bring the HQ very close so I can actually support these troops because it's going to get hot very, very soon. So back to the first army. So you most powerful divisions will go to Krasnodar and my cop because that's where most of the fighting will be. Right, so all of the rest, like weaker divisions, like maybe some of the weaker motorized divisions, because they are just as fast as your best tanks. Uh, so pl five plus three, uh, so you, you will push them towards the east. And since the stronger divisions, this is one of the reasons you're actually sending the stronger divisions, they are doing pretty well on their own. They're powerful, they don't need any HQ tricks or whatever. They will more or less persevere. They'll be fine. And you will need HQ in the east to give uh, emergency supplies. So you will send your HQ. You'll set up. Uh, I will set up the uh, the supply hub as east in an as east and uh, is in a location that is as eastern as possible, as advanced to the east as possible, and then send the HQ even further. And then I will be able to kind of provide the emergency supplies to all of the forward units in the east. That's pretty much how you need to do it. And we actually will witness that. I'm happy to say that well, by turn four, that pocket uh, just south uh, east of Rostov is virtually destroyed. I was really, really happy that uh, Tikhoretsk was empty and the hex past it was empty and the bridge was still intact. Like, obviously, the AI was still hoping to use that railway to kind of um, uh, to supply his, its pockets. So, yeah, it's, it's, it was doing, I'm doing pretty well. So these kinds of moves, these kinds of successes suggest that uh, you are on time. You're not too late. So you do, if you don't see any bridges blowing, if you see the AI failing to protect its, uh, its supply lines is pretty much universally a good sign. It usually means that the AI has failed and you are on time. So because, like, not fail, the AI will see what you're doing, but it has uh, has not reacted yet to what you're doing. So you're not too slow. Uh, actually, the same is true. And by the way, here's me taking up Ganerovo for the first time. I think it was to, to I did it twice in this playthrough. Uh, and here's me using uh, recon and force and getting up to, uh, into up Ganerovo. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So if this is one of the many, many, many uses of uh, for, force and recon. It's kind of situational, but there are many situations in which like it's it's almost like a magic trick. Uh, making so many uh, things very easy. Quite often, like on hard, when playing on hard, it's like you just need to do these tricks. Because I know that the, this DLC is as hard as it gets. And pretty much, um, speaking of difficulty, pretty much this is the limit of how hard, like Stalingrad on hard is pretty much the limit of how reasonably. Uh, how reasonably the hard the game can get. So if it gets like a few percent harder, it's it's going to be ridiculous. You might as well just roll dice and see if you win or not, right? So, uh, but uh, but yes, this is still very skill based. Is still kind of requires you to know mechanic mechanics, look mechanics up, and be familiar with everything you have at your disposal, including the recon and force. Because I like up to. Kind of late, uh, late uh, in Barbarossa. So there was a particular mission in Barbarossa, uh, um, at Dnieper Crossings, which I hated. Well, not really hated, hated, but it was kind of really annoying because it felt puzzly, and there were a couple of places that were difficult to like. You, you it felt like you needed to get very lucky there, or like you c could very easily get unlucky, right? And so. Uh, and then I realized that someone was, someone else actually played it and used successfully used Recon and Force, because prior to that I thought Recon and Force, oh, yeah, it's usually like a level 3 ability, it's expensive, it feels like complex, and, and, uh, and I don't feel like I've never needed to use it, and it's expensive, and very situational, so I'm not gonna care, right? 
And so, and then, yeah, like I've been told, hey, like somebody actually like didn't have any trouble, like, and th there was a particular place where you had to deal, like, as far as I remember, with stragglers. There was a high chance of getting stragglers and not being able to get through to a very, uh, to an objective with a very short deadline. So you had to take it quickly, but there was a big chance of getting stragglers uh, obstructing your, getting in your way. But you had actually a mobile unit with a recon uh, step, or you could give it a recon step, I, I really don't remember. And so, uh... Uh, so, and, uh... And so, yeah, and then I kind of, yeah, I thought, maybe I should, like, look at it. Maybe it makes sense, right? So, maybe I, I should start it. And kind of like in Moscow 41, it didn't work that much. In in uh, Victory in the West, which I played on hard in the meantime, it's too easy for the most part. Uh, and here in Stalingrad, I start I'm starting to see, uh, increasingly starting to see uh, its utility, and increasingly starting to increasingly see its utility. Uh, I am failing with language today. Uh, so. Really, it's useful. It's there are a bunch of situations uh, when it's really, really nice. It's kind of situational, but the thing is that in in those situations when it can be used, it's incredibly powerful. And if you know how to use it and you know how to plan for it, you can actually like manage to to you can actually manage very surprising and very very successful and uh, impressive feats actually so definitely go for for uh, 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 for recon and force especially in this DLC because of the other DLCs yeah you can survive without it uh, and in this one they it's kind of one of the features of the Germans it's kind of historically accurate the Germans uh, liked their heavy recon so had pretty heavy um, armored cars and everything to, to do recon for their, for their motorized formations. And so, yes, this is the horror. And all of this horde will start counterattacking. And... If you think this is uh, bad, if you think this is bad, just you wait. Just, you, like, not, not just you wait. Yeah, this, this is it. This is it. Don't, don't worry about it. By the way, I've like sustained a lot. Like the the I I actually was preparing to to like restart or revert to my save point at this point because I saw that my motorized division, my only chance of succeeding and defending properly defending Amgarero was like almost destroyed. But I succeeded anyway, so like I'm really happy with that. So in uh so this is a horde, like no no doubt about it. And but in the original. Uh, pre or like not the original the in the pre-release uh, build of this campaign of the DLC and like it like up, when it updates it doesn't update your current saves so yeah I'm still for example playing the the a historic branch the historic branch of this DLC I'm still playing it on the in the um, I'm still playing the pre-release build but I'm I, I've been told that actually it hasn't uh, hasn't been updated significantly. So it hasn't had these uh, these updates. So like in the pre uh, pre release build, it was crazy. It was like much 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 stronger, and I'm not sure how stronger the units uh, were. It might have been that that the HQ was more powerful, and this is actually one of the hallmarks of the new AI that it's very good at using. And here's me rushing for an upper, which as you can see is empty. It's always empty. And so, uh, it's one of the hallmarks of it, the AI, it's very good at using and combining crap loads of suppressive fires and uh, faint attacks, pretty much what players do. And here's a glitch, here's a glitch. Like, these border glitches are like, uh, sometimes they just appear in this game, I, I don't know, like, I, they've been around f since forever. But the key to this, to dealing with this horde, is pretty much to kind of fool the AI, because uh, and here's me uh, re reaching Petrovska and that little tank division kind of already out of supply, but there is some uh, air supply, um, th there is the uh, air supply uh, theater assets, so you can do that. By the way, the 17th army is advancing in two directions, so maybe potentially helping out in the east. Obviously the infantry divisions are way too far from uh, any, from being useful at all, but uh, you can actually set up a supply hub uh, in uh, in the um, 
in that eastern area if you take that railway. And as you can see, it's empty. So uh, generally, you can expect it. So to deal with this horde, pretty much what you need to do is to force the AI into attacking everything that is not Opgenerevo. And by the way, take that, um, take that no retreatability for uh, the fourth uh, tank army. I know it's the level three. It's kind of not something you usually go for the tank for tank armies. And it's expensive, uh, but really, you need it. You really need it. Uh, but, like, essentially, the AI, the way it behaves, is that the area just, uh, like, Abganerevo and everything kind of east and west and north of it, right? So that area, except for, like, the, the southern, a uh, couple of southern, uh, essentially everything that's south of the river, the AI doesn't give a damn about. But everything that north of the river, and obviously the camera is moving, like and everything, so, like, it's difficult to explain, is everything that above the river, right, so in Abganerovo, is, uh, is marked for the AI as something that the AI should fight tooth and nail for, right, so it's aggressive. It's been told, oh, yeah, you, you be aggressive there, so, yeah, no, like, don't ask, like, just, you have to go there. And so that's what it does. It's not just up Ganerovo. It's, it's being very, it's very jealous about pretty much all of that area. So if you send troops there, even they're like they're if they're not particularly powerful, like those Romanian uh, infantry divisions, uh, the AI will will like work on them, and this will distract the AI. First and foremost, this will distract the AI from uh, focusing on. Abgenerovo, that's one. So this is already you like you're holding out because by the end of like turn uh, turn maybe nine or ten you will will have finished the mission. So it's uh, so one. It's obviously an, an option to a way to kind of uh, survive, yeah, overcome uh, the sword deal. And so the the other element to this is that you're actually dealing damage to the soviet troops they're, like they've got they obviously had some troops at the beginning they got that uh, big wave around turn six as far as i remember and then they're not getting any additional reinforcements so you can actually uh, and you will, we will see that you can actually um uh, actually yeah force them to lose enough troops that they will stop attacking so the AI will consider, oh yes, I I've, don't have enough troops, so I really need to kind of, well, start, uh, start entrenching and, well, see how it goes. And this is what we'll see. So, yeah, be kind of this uh, very aggressive about your defense, right? So, okay, so I'm losing all these uh, remaining divisions. I will be returned. I, I will get them, many of them back, all of them back, if I need to. If they'll participate in the, in the future campaign. And so... um. Yeah, so if you can attack, so I, I don't know, like uh, the game tells you, oh, it's going to be two to one. Yeah, so like, like do it. It's it's a, it's pretty good odds, uh, because your task here obviously don't waste your most powerful units like that uh, Moserized division, which I actually failed. But then I had that strong German infantry division um, veterans, uh, which I actually uh, transferred the. Uh, the steps do from from the most rise division so like that's one like that was really kind of this ad hoc trying to uh trying to scramble and and roll with a punch uh, so to speak and so yeah it succeeded it, it really worked that approach uh but yeah attack be aggressive force the ai to lose its troops and well yeah eventually like decide well it's not worth it Let, let's stop <laughs> because that's what it'll do and by the way, you have seen that the AI did not attack uh, attack up Abgenerovo. So kind of focus on everything else, and uh, eventually it just runs out of steam, and nothing happens. And so, yeah, at this point, I'm only uh, Hadizhensk and uh, and the Petigorsk, as far as I remember what that was the name, uh, are short of succeeding in this mission. So, yeah, it's Petigorsk. And thankfully, the Soviets left a lot of uh, supply hubs in the area. Generally, they do, especially in Stavropol. That's pretty much your lifeline in this area. And so, Petigorsk is mine. I'm suspecting the next turn is going to be uh, Hadizhensk, so one turn early. But obviously, Hadizhensk... Actually, that was my first time. This this mission, this playthrough, was my first time when I actually reached Hadizhensk and I didn't know what to expect. And as you can see, it's not very well defended, so it's not something like, it's not like a fortress, is that? So, it was, so it's just like, 
all sorts of... Yeah, there are many troops in there, and I'm assuming that the AI just moved a bunch of them just from the north. But it's also, yeah, it's not prepared, so it's not great uh, entrenched, well, well entrenched units with engineers and stuff. Like, no, no, they're just, just like something cobbled together, and uh, they're not gonna withstand your best, uh, your best tank divisions uh, from the first army. So, which actually, I'm moving, uh, moving back to the west, uh, to the southwest, because obviously, the first army has accomplished its mission in the east for now, at least. At least in this mission, in this scenario. And the, like as you can see, the AI has al already sees that the futility of its efforts. So uh, it's clearly trying, to already switching to the, oh, let's screw with the player mode. Because that move with the tanks, yes, I see. I, I, I spy with my little eye something with the beginning with a, uh, an S, like a supply hub. Yes, and I... Obviously, the AI was going for its and not for Abganero because it clearly did not see it as a viable, uh, as a viable option anymore. And so yeah, turn ten, I am taking conditions, like just sending all these troops. I don't care. I just want to end this quickly uh, because I wasn't entirely sure. This is still like a very stressful objective, uh, Abganero, even though it seemed to be pretty, pretty secure. Yeah, uh, it was still. I was kind of a bit stressed about it, and I did not want to like fail on the last turn. I, I remember that it was like this. This came out of uh, like maybe like four hours of play, like a four-hour session uh, of me just just uh, restarting and then reverting to save points and everything. And uh, it was pretty tough. It it is a tough mission. It is the toughest uh, mission of the first. Like three and a half conferences, let's put it this way, in this DLC, and it's easily more difficult than most of the missions uh, in the DLC. Certainly, most of like most of everything that came um, came before before Moscow Forty One, and I'd say it's it's tough. It's tough. It's tougher than most. Like I okay, I don't remember remember uh, Blitzkrieg that well anymore, but I should actually play it on hard. Uh, and especially since it has been updated since I uh, I played it uh, when it just came out, so they they actually changed a few missions, made them slightly easier actually. Uh, but yes, so this mission is over. They're not getting through. So thankfully, I've got those hours, uh, and all the other objectives are mine. At this point, I'm just uh, collecting experience, hoping to get something out of this. Maybe getting actually getting something out of this. And this is it for this video, it's been long enough, uh, thank you for watching and listening, and good bye!